Good day YouTubers and welcome to another video. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I switched over to lithium batteries about 12 months ago, a little bit over 12 months ago now. I did that because I had to replace my AGM batteries and I wanted to go lithium because of the weight saving and also because of the reduced lifetime costs. I couldn't afford the more expensive lithium batteries at the time so I went with the budget batteries I did ask around a bit and most people were saying that yes, they seem to be okay. The seem to be okay part of it is the key issue and that's what this video is about. I did a video at the time about changing over to the lithium batteries and since putting that video up on YouTube I've had quite a few people contact me and ask me what I thought about the cheaper batteries and how they were going. I'm pretty sure my universal answer was along the lines of so far so good but give it more time. I'm glad I gave that answer now because I gave it more time and I've changed my opinion. One of the batteries is still going strong, no issues at all with that. But the other one, not real happy at all. I guess it just goes to show the old saying, you get what you pay for. At the time I replaced both the 12 volt house battery and the Minn Kota system with a single 24 volt battery. They both went okay at first. The 12 volt battery is still going quite fine, I'm happy with that. But the 24 volt battery, I begin to suspect after about 9 months that the Minn Kota wasn't running as long before it quit. When I had the AGM batteries I don't ever recall running them so low that the Minn Kota stopped working. But anyway, I thought maybe I've made a mistake on that trip. I'll charge the batteries up and go out again next time and see how it goes. Well, I did that twice more and by the 11th month, like that's into November, I bought the batteries early in January and just starting in November, so 10 months into buying the batteries at the beginning of November, it failed fairly quickly and I couldn't even raise them in cater out of the water. I got a 24 volt charging system on the boat. So I started the motor, got some charge going and that gave me enough to get the Minn Kota raised and stowed again. So definitely the battery went flat and it went flat within a couple of hours. And that was after being certain that I'd given it a full charge. The other thing that was raising red flags for me about the battery was the charging time. It's a 100 amp hour battery and if it was run down to half to say 50 amps, my charger puts out a maximum of 15 amps. If it needs 50 amp hours into it, and I can put out 15 amps, then 15 into 50, it should take a little bit over three hours to fully charge that battery. However, I was connecting my charger and after a half hour to an hour, it was telling me the battery was full. Even though I'd run it to empty, to the point where it wouldn't even raise the encoder on the previous trip. So there's a red flag right there, something wrong with the charging in the battery. I'm not running a cheap charger, I'm running a Victron charger, one of those smart ones that knows all about the lithium batteries and how to handle them. Connect your phone up to it, Bluetooth, and it tells you all about it. So it's a good system. Once I was certain that there was something wrong with the battery, I contacted the company I bought it off and asked about getting a warranty replacement on it. I bought the battery in early January and this was the beginning of November. So from the 1st to the 11th month, that's 10 full months I'd had it, the battery came with a one year warranty. I expected that they'd do something about it. I bought the battery off eBay and I contacted them on eBay Messenger to ask about the warranty. But they refused to talk to me about it on eBay Messenger. They insisted on getting a phone number so that we could discuss it over the phone. At the time I thought, oh this is good, they want to sort it out, we'll talk about it, they'll explain it, talk about what's wrong, send it back to them to test it, I'll get a new battery. Well, that wasn't the case, and in retrospect I do wonder whether the reason they wanted to talk about it on the phone and not on eBay Messenger was so that there was no record of the conversations. Now that's pure speculation that may be out of place, and in any event it's a simple matter to record a conversation on the phone, so... So it really doesn't mean you got no record. Well when he rang me, he told me there was nothing wrong with his battery, that it was my system and that he'd get an electrical engineer he knew, who didn't work for him apparently, but was someone he knew, to ring me up and explain what was wrong with my system so that I could fix that and keep using his battery which was perfect. I didn't really believe it but I went along with it, go through all the hoops, 
get it sorted. Eventually we'll get the battery back to them, they'll test it, find out it's wrong, and give me a new battery under the warranty. So I thought. When the electrical engineer rang, the first thing he said was, your motor's got some water in the casing, and that causes it to draw a lot more power than it would normally draw, and that's why your battery's going flat so soon. Well, I didn't really think that was the case, but I couldn't argue with him because I couldn't prove it. So he got me to buy an amp clamp to put on the wires so that I could measure the amperage that was being drawn when the motor was running. That wasn't that big an expense, and I'd always kind of wanted an amp clamp for various things. So I thought, oh yeah, I'll go and buy it and run that test. Prove that it's not the motor, and then we'll get the battery sorted. So I thought. So what I did was I deployed the motor so the shaft was vertical and the propeller was clear of the trailer and everything else and I put the amp clamp on and ran it through all of its speed settings. Bearing in mind the propeller's out of water so there's no load on the propeller, of course it didn't draw as many amps as it would have if it was in the water pulling the boat along. But what we did prove by not drawing the amps was that there was no water in the motor casing to cause it to draw more amps. The motor was completely normal. I repeated the test twice on land and then I took the boat out on the water and repeated the test again with load on the propeller. Minn Kota publishes a chart with the amperage draw at each speed setting for that particular model of motor and the amperage draw on my motor was pretty much spot on with the published chart. So again, definitely nothing wrong with the motor and it's not drawing more power than it should. Now in my discussions with the electrical engineer, he said a couple of things that caused me to wonder just how much he knows about electricity. I'm a software engineer. That doesn't mean I know a lot about electricity, but I do have to deal with a little bit of the computer hardware, so I know a bit about it. I've also had a fascination with physics throughout my life, and I've learned a lot there. He's either very poor at explaining things, and couldn't get what he was trying to say across, or he's just got the wrong end of the stick, and I think it's the latter. He told me that electrons flow from the negative terminal to the positive and they carry the charge and therefore that everything should be fused and measured from the negative terminal. He's half right. Yes, electrons carry a negative charge and yes, they flow from the negative terminal to the positive, but they don't carry the current in a conventional circuit. In a conventional circuit, the current is regarded as positive and it's caused by the electrons leaving an atom and leaving it positively charged. There's a lot of physics involved, it's beyond the scope of what I want to go into here, but a fellow called Veritasium has a YouTube channel that it deals in this sort of physics and he has a really good explanation of the electric field that travels at nearly the speed of light as opposed to the electrons which only travel at a few thousand kilometers per hour. The electric field carries the current, the electrons just move through the wire producing the field. It's complicated. Look at the diagram I've got up on the screen, it might give you a clue. Other than that, delve into some real physics books and you'll get it figured out. For now, what bothered me was his claim that you fuse everything on the negative terminal, which is contrary to every other book I've ever read, particularly about marine electronics. Everything is fused on the positive side. The United States Survey Standards insist that everything be fused on the positive side. Firstly, as close to the battery as you can with your main fuse, and then at branch points on the positive line as you branch off to your other components. You know, the fact that he's fusing on a negative line, there is a potential, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but there's a potential that the wire will melt before the fuse blows, and that's when you have a fire. As I say, maybe he was just very poorly explaining it, but that's the message I got from him, and I really don't see how I got it wrong, but I'll concede that I could have. Even though I wasn't asked, I also bought a second 24 volt charger. Again, it's a Victron unit, but this one plugs into the 240 volts and charges a battery, whereas the one I've been using is a DC-DC charger and it takes 12 volts off the alternator or other 12 volt source and converts it to 24 volts to charge the battery. So just to eliminate any argument about that, because they were sort of indicating they thought there might have been something wrong with my charging setup, I went and bought a second charger, charged the battery with that, videoed the charge cycle and how short it was, 
and then took it out on the water and ran it. It lasted about an hour and a half before it was discharged and I had to start the motor to stow the mincoder again. Sent them all that information, videos, etc. and thought, well, surely this will prove it and I'll get the battery back and have a look at it and I'll get my warranty replacement. So I thought. It was at that point that they stopped talking to me. Now, I'd been polite in all my conversations with them. Even when I didn't believe what they were saying, I was still polite. I complied with all their requests. I went and bought the amp clamp. I ran their tests. I ran the tests three times, just to be sure, once on the water. I went and bought another charger that I hadn't been asked for and videoed all that. Sent it down to them. I really and truly expected that they would get the battery back and do some tests on it and then meet their warranty requirements. It's a legal requirement to honour your warranty when you give one. Now, I'm not arguing that it wasn't fit for purpose, but they gave a one-year warranty and it didn't last. Now, given all this and the fact that they didn't ask to get the battery back, they showed no interest at all in getting the battery back to test it. They blamed everything on my setup. To me, that sounds like a company that had no intention of honouring a warranty that they've given. Now, I might be doing them a disservice. Maybe there's some other explanation. You can decide for yourselves what you think the explanation is. I can't see any other way to view it, but I concede there could be. So, given the battery's not working and I don't have a Mincoda without a working battery, what am I doing about it? Well, I looked around and I bought a battery that's a little bit more than twice what I paid for this other one. I couldn't afford it at the time, but the new battery comes with a seven-year warranty and it is backed by a company which I believe will honour their warranty. It's a large company, they import a lot of stuff into Australia, their brand's on the battery, so it's BLA, I'm pretty sure they're going to honour their warranty. They give a seven year full replacement warranty, so they're basically guaranteeing their battery will last seven years if used within their specifications, which I am. So over a seven year lifetime, that battery is way cheaper than I just spent on a cheap battery. Per year that is, you can see the figures up there for yourself on the screen. It's a pretty cheap battery. It's even cheaper than an AGM. AGM batteries aren't all that cheap, and their lifetime's a lot shorter. Given that they're offering a seven-year replacement warranty on their batteries, I will fully expect that battery to last 10 years, because otherwise there's no point in them offering a seven-year warranty if it's going to fail. They're pretty certain that that battery's going to last. So I'm counting on 10 years out of this battery, which makes it a damn cheap battery. I'm very sorry I didn't have the extra cash to spend at the time when I bought it originally and got the cheap one. Wished I had, but I didn't, so I got burnt. You know, that happens. You get what you pay for, I guess. And my father always said that a warranty is only as good as the company that gives it. That's been proven again. Every confidence at BLA will honour their warranty, and I won't have to do another video like this. I'll just say also that it's my interpretation of everything that happened. You can interpret the events differently. You might come to a different conclusion than I have, and that's fine. Go and buy a battery orphan if you feel comfortable with that. You may have a really good experience with it. Maybe I just had everything on a bad day. Miscommunications could have been anything. You make up your own mind. Don't let me put you off. It's your decision. You've got the information I have. If you interpret it differently, well and good. The two screenshots you see up here at the moment are both from the BLA battery and both showing the state of the battery nine days apart. First one shows it immediately after a full charge, the second one nine days after and the state of the battery at that time. I'm going out in a couple of days on the water to use the battery for the first time on the Minn Kota, and I'm going to add that to the end of this video before I publish it. Okay, well, up here it's working just fine with the new battery. It is now uh, 10 past 9 and I've been here since 5 o'clock. That's 4 hours and 10 minutes that it's been running. And as you can see from the screenshot, it's barely touched the battery in that time. Whereas with the other battery, it should be flat well before me. Nothing wrong with the Altera, everything wrong with the battery in my opinion. Well there you go, I was out on the water and the Minn Kota's worked perfectly for hours on end on the new battery. To my mind, that absolutely proves that there was a problem with the other battery. Again, you may come to a different opinion and that's fine. 
I'm just telling you how I view the events and the circumstances and my conclusions. You're free to draw your own. And that's it for the video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it. I hope it's educated you a little bit in what can go wrong if you buy a cheap battery. I'm not saying that it will go wrong for you. You may have a totally different experience to what I have. But it's taught me a lesson. I've always known the lesson is there. But sometimes when you haven't got the money for something and you want it, you have to take a risk and give it a go. However, it just proves you get what you pay for and a warranty is only as good as the company that gives it. If you have bad luck with both of them, then you have an experience like this. It happens. You live and learn. Until next time, good fishing.